Hello, this is going to be a PowerPoint presentation of the integration of middle range theory into practice and research. This is Kristen Clefane, RN, MSN, CPN. The objectives of this PowerPoint is going to be to identify the gaps in the current literature surrounding the phenomenon of the DMP student's interest and to identify the research question identify middle range theory selected for the scholarly project. So to begin, we'll give you a little bit of an introduction to nursing theory, practice and research. So Goodson in 2015 described nursing theory as nursing practice in and of itself, as well as nursing research being nursing practice. In addition to caring for patients at the bedside, caring for patients in the community, health education within schools of nursing, as well as health policy writing as a nurse in practice. The levels of abstraction within nursing theory are grand and middle range. And middle range theories do have the ability to transfer directly to practice as empirical indicators. Because those empirical indicators are more readily available for practical use, testing, and evaluation. The middle range theory that was selected for the scholarly project that will be completed throughout the DNP program is Christine Tanner's middle range theory, the clinical judgment model. This model was based on two systematic reviews of approximately 200 articles combined that examine the process by which nurses make clinical judgments. This clinical judgment model was published in 2006. This theory does possess boundaries for use within the nursing discipline alone, and it's not able to be transferred to other disciplines without further research. Upon Tanner's systematic literature reviews, it was conducted that nurses base clinical judgments on prior knowledge, patterns of knowing, the setting of the situation in which the clinical judgment is being made, various types of reasoning, such as critical thinking, intuition, and reflection. That reflection is critical for the development of clinical knowledge and improvement in clinical reasoning, as cited by Tanner in 2006. This theory proposes that nurses utilize far more than knowledge of the nursing process to guide their clinical judgments. However, pre-novice nurses need to analytically reason clinical situations before this can occur. Nursing students should be encouraged to recognize when a clinical situation is reflective of prior learned scientific knowledge, such as in a classroom or an online learning format. This allows the nursing student to engage in meaningful learning and building experiential knowledge. The use of this theory can be used to guide learning activities that allow nursing students the ability to recognize various reasoning patterns that they employed to inform their clinical judgments, and therefore areas where strong reasoning skills were present and areas for improvement needed. The construction of those learning activities are of special interest to the Doctor of Nursing Practice student. Areas of special interest, as described by Moran, should be considered when taking into account the areas that perhaps can be explored within your scholarly project during the DNP program. The selection of the middle range theory began with identifying a phenomenon of interest and asking a preliminary research question that was subject to change. The phenomenon of interest explored was the lack of critical thinking articulation among nursing students noted during simulation debriefing. These observations were noted anecdotally within a pre-licensure master's of nursing program. 
The simulation debriefings occurred within multiple nursing student cohorts over a period of one year. All cohorts were within their second to last semester of the accelerated 15-month direct entry Master of Science nursing program. That phenomenon of interest led the DNP student to explore critical thinking as the critical concept within the analysis that occurred. It was discovered that the inability to articulate thought processes, much like the DNP students' observations and the nursing students, has also been documented among practicing nurses. And that was noted in a systematic review completed by Odell, Victor, and Oliver in 2009. Following this preliminary literature review completed by the DNP student, a theory was then chosen to deepen the DNP student's understanding of the phenomenon, followed by a conceptual analysis of the critical concept, as suggested by Moran and Burson in 2014. Tanner's clinical judgment model was selected as the middle range nursing theory to be used in this practice integration. The model makes a clear link between critical thinking and clinical judgment. The evaluation of the theory selected included examining it for significance, internal consistency, parsimony, empirical adequacy, and pragmatic adequacy before determining it to be useful. A conceptual analysis model of critical thinking was then completed. A conceptual analysis followed by a systematic and thorough literature review allows the re-researcher to identify links between the concepts of a theory to the proposed research questions concepts. The critical thinking conceptual analysis led to a thorough review of the literature utilizing keywords of the following research question. How does the integration of concept mapping into high fidelity simulation impact critical thinking articulation among nursing students? Critical thinking, clinical reasoning, and clinical judgment are often used interchangeably within the literature. And that's important to consider when examining the vast array of articles that are available. This research question was prompted after reviewing the leading causes of medical errors in recent years, one of those being delay in care, as cited by the Joint Commit Mission in 2015. The systematic review further found that intuition was the top reason that nurses summons a rapid response team in clinical situations, although the validity of this intuition was questioned by physicians because nurses had difficulty articulating their thought processes that led them to call for help. The physician's questioning of the nurse's validity and their thought processes led to delays in the rapid response team arriving to the patient's bedside, thus leading to delays in care, which result in negative patient outcomes. Multiple factors affect why intuition validity is not consistently recognized among physicians or other advanced practitioners. One of the factors named was the inability of nurses to clearly articulate their critical thinking, clinical reasoning, clinical judgment processes that led them to be concerned. Despite these factors, the relevance of intuition in the expert nurse is well documented, such as in articles by Benner in 1982 and Odell in 2009. It is well supported in the literature that in order to develop intuition as a practicing nurse, pre-novice nurses must first possess and practice the antecedents along with the attributes of intuition being present, such as knowledge, critical thinking skills, prior experiences, reflection, self-confidence, environment, lapse of longitudinal time, recognition, acceptance, and then ultimately trust of that intuition. That then, therefore, leads us to wonder what allows a nursing student and a nurse to trust their intuition, especially if, on the receiving end, you're communicating as a nurse to a physician or an advanced practitioner that you are concerned about a patient, you have a gut instinct, and you don't know how to explain it. So, let's therefore 
increase the ability of nursing students and then therefore practicing nurses to be able to articulate those thought processes that led them to become concerned. The next slide is going to show us a graphic of Tanner's model of clinical judgment. While this entire process of clinical judgment begins with the context, the background, and the relationship, the relationship between the nurse or the nursing student and the patient, the background, so the background information that perhaps maybe isn't available in the given situation, and then the context, so the context in which or the setting in which the clinical judgment is occurring. All of these things are going to go into the noticing. The noticing is the ability of that nurse to be aware of what is occurring with their patient and if it has any significance. That noticing takes into account the expectations before they even perhaps enter the patient's room or enter the bedside of the patient. And then the initial grasp. Do I care about this data? Do I not care about this data? Which data is relevant in order for me to interpret what I am potentially going to be doing for that patient? Within that interpretation comes those reasoning patterns, such as basic analytic skills, intuitive skills, and then narrative skills. The responding is the action, of course, so our nursing interventions. Because of those actions, we have outcomes. And then a reflection needs to occur in order for us to look at those outcomes. How did the patient respond? Do I need to continue doing the same intervention, change my intervention, or perhaps heighten the amount of care that is required for this patient and summons a rapid response team, for example, or summons an SBAR communication to an advanced practitioner. The reflection after that action occurs, so later on, perhaps alone as an individual or in a debriefing simulation, is the reflection that occurred during that instance and how could I maybe do it differently next time in order to promote the patient's best outcome. This particular research study that will occur for the scholarly project during the DNP is specifically looking at increasing the areas of noticing and interpreting. The action and the outcome is perhaps not something that every particular student will be able to encounter during the simulations that will occur for the larger scholarly project because not every single student will perhaps play the nurse role. They will be able to talk about the different actions that they're seeing even if they're perhaps playing the charge nurse role or the PCA role within the simulation. They are going to be able to still observe and then therefore reflect on the actions that occurred between the students that were playing the nurse and the patient. So that leads us to the research question that will then guide the larger scholarly project. How does the integration of concept mapping into high fidelity simulation impact critical thinking articulation among nursing students? The hypothesis that was derived from the current research and the review and then this theoretical paper is that if nurse educators encourage learners to articulate both, both verbally and on paper, because at this point I would suggest that students still create a narrative reflection after the simulation has completed, given the time constraints for each simulation, and the fact that Tanner's model does explain that a reflection after the action occurs, not immediate, 
but after the entire action occurs is critical for the student to be able to enhance their clinical learning and apply it to later situations. That will redo this if nurse educators encourage learners to articulate both verbally and on paper. With the guidance of expert nurses, the guidance of expert nurses is key here within simulation debriefing. And according to Novak's long time research over greater than 30 years, that the guidance of expert nurses is critical to the reflection and the clinical learning that will be derived from the simulation experiences. That their reasoning patterns, logical, analytical, and intuitive, are then recognized and trusted. And then that is going to foster a deeper intuition in clinical judgment that can be applied to later nursing practice. The second hypothesis that I'm unsure at this point if I'm going to be able to research it and gather findings during the DNP program, but to continue the research after the DNP program is completed is that upon obtaining a registered nurse license, the student will then be able to transfer and use this articulation process within their own nursing practice thus leading to positive patient outcomes. In order for that research to occur, the DMP student would have to follow those specific nursing students that were included in the study and more than likely gather qualitative data, survey data, questions, um, focus groups, interviews, um, whether it's electronic because some of our students do within the program that I currently teach do travel um, sometimes even out of the country after they're done with the program actually a decent amount of them probably about 25 percent or more um, so therefore I would have to um, communicate with them by way of either an electronic format um, a survey or just an open-ended um, telephone conversation. So that would more than likely look more qualitative as opposed to the quantitative data that I am hoping to use for the scholarly project during the DMP program. So the further research is going to be carried out. The literature review and the theoretical framework for the phenomenon have been selected. The study design that has been preliminarily discussed um, in discussion boards within um, DMP 800 is that there will be a mixed method study with a control and treatment group. The control group is going to be those students that are currently completing the same simulation scenario. So the simulation scenario will be the control and those students are going to complete that simulation scenario the same way that it is being done now the same debriefing mechanisms, the same pre um, preparatory work, the same post-simulation reflection that is also completed. The treatment group is going to complete that same simulation scenario, but in addition to completing the scenario, they are going to have a different type of preparatory work, which is going to include concept mapping. Those concept maps are going to be used before the simulation is carried out, they're going to be used mid-simulation where the breakdown in the clinical judgments are going to be discussed with expert faculty. Those questions that are going to be asked by the expert faculty or raters in this example for the study are going to be things that are going to be pulled from Lassiter's clinical judgment rubric that grades students or nurses basically on their ability to use clinical judgment, either from beginning um, to exemplary, um, exemplary meaning expert. So the way in which the students answer the questions is going to rate their ability to use clinical ju ju judgment, specifically within the noticing and interpreting categories of Tanner's model. So that rubric is going to be used to quantitatively compare the ability of the control group and the treatment group to use clinical judgment effectively, according to Lassiter's clinical judgment rubric. 
I look forward to conducting this research while um, it has been a rigorous semester. I'm sure there are more ahead and this PowerPoint will be continued as the DMP program continues. Thank you. I appreciate your time.